You could tell, like, she did not understand, like, why we were near her, why we were around her, and she would flinch, and, like, she just looked so sad. Iris! Hi, girl! What you doing? We have a finished basement, and it goes right to the outdoors, so we usually start our fosters there and then kind of see how they go and, and she would just kind of like sit in this back corner behind a planter sometimes her head would pop up and it looked like she was like growing out of the planter so that was one of her spots iris come inside babe come on come on we left our door open for her for the first month she was outside she would like come in and she'd like poke her head in and then she'd leave and she'd do that 15 times What you doing? <laughs> okay, girl. We were carrying her everywhere. It's okay, Iris. We'll go in the house. We couldn't walk her, but she never really understood like, oh, I can follow you. She would rather me just pick her up and carry her. Good girl, this is okay. <laughs> She wouldn't lay on anything, so I started covering our basement floor with blankets. Okay. Hi, baby. Hi, girl. What's up? Hi, good girls. What? It's okay. All right, bye. Good girl. So she would start to learn, like, I can lie on these. And I would hide treats in there. So then the, the basement floor became another spot that she really liked. When we fed her, I would have to bring her food to wherever she was. You want more? Girl. I don't think yeah. she really understood human engagement. You like snuggles, right? And then from there, I kind of like up the ante and I would like, you know, hug her, pet her more often. She would look at me like, I don't know what you're doing, but I like it. I started just kind of like picking her up and putting her next to me on the couch and being like, we're hanging out today, girlfriend, sorry. So eventually she started getting up on her own. Good girl. You're a good girl. We had her for about a month when we introduced our dog to her. I started with letting my dog out on our top deck. Hi girl. And Max just like watching her and learning that she was there. You're both boring. Iris was just sitting there behind a tree. And then Max was kind of looking at me like, can I go see her or should I wait? And so for the first couple weeks of introducing them, Max just kind of sat there. And they just sat with like a distance between them and just sat and did absolutely nothing. And then eventually they kind of started engaging more. She just started progressing so quickly. It was really, really sweet. out of like nowhere. She just started like doing these like play bows and, and barking. And I was just sitting there like, oh my gosh, what? who is this dog? She was frolicking around our yard, pouncing around like this like baby 
elephant. about three weeks after the play house to be able to get her to walk on a leash. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Good girl, Iris. Okay. Very good. And eventually she started really liking walks. <laughs> Around this time, I had a, a close friend reach out. Her, so he asked, you know, how many applications do you have? We had a few, but we really wanted Iris to be with a dog that would pull her out of her shell, like much like our dog was, and they applied for her. And First day we got her, um, we brought them out in the backyard and the two dogs played immediately. The first thing she did was she walked in her house and hopped on her couch. So she knew that I'm never laying on the floor ever again, like, I know what's soft. The first night, she jumped in this right away so she never even thought about it. She's an absolute sweet dog. She's got not a vicious bone in her body. Uh, she loved watching television. She loves Cleo. Anywhere Cleo is, she wants to... Cleo's on the couch, she wants to be next to Cleo. Cleo's definitely teaching her how to be a dog. We're just, we're super lucky to have her. I mean, we, we love her.